people. So I was wondering if you could summarize maybe in a, two minutes or so what Simplify Acquisitions means, what it is, how does it work? Just a, a highlight. Sure. Sure. So your simplified acquisitions are typically $250,000 and less. And those acquisitions should be steered exclusively towards small businesses. And because those are simplified acquisitions, they really shouldn't have the long drawn out processes of, let's say, like an F-35 major weapon system, trillion dollar life cycle acquisition. So because of that, we have um, streamlined processes that we, the government, can use to to buy under the Federal Acquisition Regulation Part 13, which is entitled Simplified Acquisition. So it talks about various ways that we can use to bypass some of the additional processes that are used in, let's say, sealed bidding or contracting by negotiation, and to really just kind of streamline that. Me personally, I only worked... Uh, simplified acquisition to small businesses for only about a year of my government service. It was rewarding and it was good, you know, talking to the small businesses and getting to know them. But I, I would say that it's much less complex and okay. many of the government side kind of try to steer away from that because, you you know, you, you want to, on my side of the house, the government side, you want to, you know, try and do the most complex acquisitions versus the, you know, competitive small dollar type stuff. Really? Is that for learning purposes that you wanted the most complex yeah. one? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. But if someone wanted a, I don't even know if I want to say that, but I was just thinking if someone wanted an easier job, I guess they could focus on, they could, you know, they'd work simplified acquisitions. Is that a fair? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because, they, but yeah, if you want to challenge yourself and grow and learn more and, um, you know, then obviously you want to work on stuff like what you worked on, right? Which is supporting the F, the simulators and the F-16 services. I mean, the big complicated projects. Yeah, the hundred million plus and billion, you get into the billion dollar contracts and things like that with, yeah. with those programs. Yeah, no, no one, um, yeah, none of my people were, are pursuing those projects. So, um, but that's what, oh yeah, you, you worked with L3 on one of those jobs, right? Yes, L, L3 was awarded the uh, the, $450 million source selection that I did around 2009-2010. Okay, okay. So going back to DAU and their mission, one of the things, are you familiar with the 809 panel? A little bit. I sat in one of the 809 panel discussions uh, one time. But did you have any specific questions? or? Uh, I was just wondering because I know that you guys teach um, to support the, the warfighters efforts, but I was just wondering if you, uh, if like their recommendations, if, if they have any impact on your, on your university or if vice versa, or do you guys offer any type of uh, input towards the needs of what, you know, the contracting officers or the buyers out there, meaning from your experiences of talking with all the people, because obviously you're training everyone, right? So from your experiences, are you guys offering any input to changes that need to be made or recommendations moving forward on how we could streamline the processes? Yes, we are. And our Undersecretary of Defense, Ms. Ms. Ellen Lord for ANS, uh, she has really taken a look at changing DAU and streamlining it to make it more efficient for the DOD. And as a result, she's taken a course like, like Con 90, which I was teaching, and making it from a four-week class, which focused on certain content and making it, changing the content, changing, I believe, about 75% of it, keep first week of it the same, and everything else was entirely different content, making it more focused towards the needs of the agencies based on what they were buying and what the, what the intern level, junior level contracting specialists uh, needed to learn. 